Hello everyone and welcome back to X-Plane 11 where I'm going to continue my flight in the SR-71 Blackbird taking off from London Heathrow Airport runway 9L intending to fly over Paris, Frankfurt, Switzerland, Austria and then landing in Venice. But I've tr attempted this flight a couple of times before. First time OBS crashed, you might have seen that at the end of the previous video and that's my recording software and that crashed and in the subsequent two attempts X-Plane crashed and so I was uh, one time in between Paris and Frankfurt and the other time approaching Frankfurt and it crashed. I think it has to do with the clouds and it just has to render the clouds when I'm going at like Mach 2 sometimes and I think that's probably the problem. So yeah, I, um, I, uh, that's an assumption of course and probably not aircraft what you want to do is go for scenery settings. I've reduced the texture quality. I, previously I had it at uh, no compression, but I'm going to leave it at maximum here in the hope that that'll help. But it's a little bit foggy out. Maybe, maybe actually what I want to do is go into the flight configuration. It says clear, though uh, taking a look outside it seems overcast. Nope. I mean there's no apparent cloud layer, which is interesting. If uh, l Let me just... Sorry, this, this has been very frustrating. It looks hazy, doesn't it? It looks like there's some... That, that definitely looks like there's clouds there. That's a cloud. Mm, I don't know. Maybe it'll be alright. I mean, that's a serious haze. But maybe it'll be alright. Maybe we can proceed like this. We're taking off at 10.30 a.m. local time. And that should be a reasonable uh, delay after landing. Since we landed about at dawn. Yeah, I just don't want it to crash again. Maybe... We'll, we'll take a look at our frame rate. And we'll make sure that we... Right now we're around a lot of airplanes, so of course the frame rate's not going to be great. But if it goes below like 20, I'll, I'll pause and change the settings, because I really don't want it to crash again. But anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, what I'll do is I'll probably just clear the weather off. Probably the best way to go. I'll also monitor my hardware. I mean, it does sort of max out the GPU. I mean, that's that's a thing it does with all the scenery. It is certainly taxing my video card. Okay, we are off the ground. And of course, I was trying some fancy sightseeing stuff around Paris before. Yeah, there's a fog here. Now, why doesn't the weather settings show that there's serious fog around here? So, we're over the Thames. You can barely see it. We don't have the proper 3D buildings. And again, I'm hoping that the new update to explain will bring 3D buildings to London. I, I'm also looking through the forums to find packages that might have appropriate buildings for different cities. If you guys know of any good ones, feel free to tell me, especially if it's like a city you want me to fly over. That would be, uh, certainly tempt me. If, if you really want me to fly over a city, uh, telling me that there's some good scenery available for it, for free, because uh, <laughs> I'm on a budget, uh, would definitely be a plus, because I like looking at the scenery to see how uh, different modders have added new scenery to the thing. Uh, have I lost the Thames? And where is it? Oh no, it's this bend here. And okay, so this is actually sort of the main bend, but we don't have the Tower of London. We don't have uh, Tower Bridge. Uh, Millennium Dome is right there. You can tell that white splotch over there. That's the Millennium Dome. Uh, it's not a 3D object. It's actually just the photo scenery texture. And off to our right here is London City Airport. But again, uh, we, we, there are a lot of buildings we don't have, like the Eiffel Tower. Of course, when we passed over New York, there wasn't any Empire State Building. Um, so, yeah, sort of problematic in that respect, doing sightseeing in here. You can certainly do some degree of VFR with roadways. Uh, the golf courses are pretty obvious. And we could get other landmarks but not radio masts, that's one thing. 
I see a wind layer here. I see another wind layer, another wind layer. There's no cloud layers here. But I guess it's matching real world conditions. I'm just going to call it manually configured. I guess maybe this is not manually uh What you got? Uh, real world conditions doesn't show up here is what I'm trying to say. Maybe that's why. This is the actual manually configured preset. And I'm just going to go with VFR. And that'll give us... Uh, so previously we had like 16 to 20 frames per second. Let's see how it is without any of the... Uh, I wouldn't mind a wind layer. Ah, but I, I don't want to think about how to configure it right now. Uh, can we just get some... I don't want stormy or anything. I just want to be able to see stuff. I think this will be alright. We're trying to go over all these major cities anyway. Let's be able to see stuff. Wow, this is much better for looking at things. So London, folks, we pass it by. But now we'll get to see stuff, so it's okay. I also need traffic. The, one of the problems with uh, X-Plane compared to Flight Sim 10 is that uh, they don't give enough sliders for the details like clouds. You know, maybe I want to turn the clouds down a bit. There's no cloud slider. Um, it's possible that in a configuration file there's a way of uh, tuning down the cloud quality, but I, I don't know about that yet. But in Flight Sim 10, you had a cloud slider, you had sliders for like traffic. So I would like to be able to configure how much uh, ground traffic there is, but I don't know how to do that right now. So there's our current course, and that's Calais, Calais Dunkirk. And then from there, we just head straight south to Paris. I guess that's Dover Harbor, or whatever it is called. Okay, and right there is the Port of Calais. There's sort of an artificial line here between uh, this photo scenery image, which was taken in a different season than that one. That obviously wouldn't be a real distinction. Okay, we're going very fast. Uh oh. Slow that down, otherwise, we're gonna overstress everything. The Seine, the river that Paris is on, is sort of a more east west sort of thing, so since we're going north south, we really couldn't follow it. That uh, mouth there is for the river Somme. The mouth for the river Seine is uh, quite a ways westward at Le Havre. Farmland in uh, Europe is always a little bit more interesting to look at than that in the United States because it's not uh, all a bunch of subdivisions, it's not a bunch of square patches. You can also tell based on the configuration of them where the streams and roads all are. Okay, we can see that we're headed straight for Paris, but over here is Charles de Gaulle Airport, and over there is Orly. Uh, so, maybe we'll uh, keep going south like this, maybe turn a little bit to the west, and follow the Seine River like that. You can see the Seine right there. There seems to be a thing missing right there. I don't know what that's about. I've been this way before a few times. Ah, there we go. It loaded in. Yeah, uh, we've had some crashes, so... Not airplane crashes, game crashes. So I've been through all this before. And the heart of Paris is right here. This stuff with all the bends in the rivers, but if you can remember this port facility and the fact that this is sort of south, southeastward, um, then it bends like this. And you'll see right here a lot of roadways coming together. That's the Arc de Triomphe. We're going very fast right now. Uh, and I don't want to stress the plane out too much. Oh, and there's a fog layer. Crikey. 
<sighs> Fog. Well, we'll have to do another loop-to-loop -loop of things. Actually, uh, we're passing it, but right here is where the Eiffel Tower would be, I think. There's the Louvre. Oh, man, there's not any good way of showing these things. Okay. <laughs> Still 600 knots indicated airspeed. But uh, this island here is where Notre Dame is, I think. But we don't have the building. Okay, now we're getting clearer. Alright, so again, Eiffel Tower there, I believe. And it looks like you can see the shadow. You can sort of see... Ah, jeez. Okay, fine. I have to be careful not to overdo things in my frustration. And not take my frustration out on the airplane. Otherwise, it will bite me back. Okay, so that's an interesting sort of garden right there, but this is the Louvre. And then if you go up that road, that's the Arc de Triomphe with all those roads leading into it. You can see, I think it's ten roads. Ten roads leading into it. A heck of a traffic sort of situation right there. I don't know how drivers deal with that, but... That's how it is. You can see, once again, the heart of Paris. I'm not entirely sure where Versailles is. That's one I don't know. I know it's a little bit further out. But anyway, we're going to head towards Frankfurt, and along the way we should pass through Luxembourg. A straight line from Paris to Frankfurt leads through Luxembourg. So, that should happen. And now we don't have any clouds to deal with. Though, what's with the haze? Hold on, let me, let me take a look at this. Okay, it's clear, customized, manually configured, no... Okay, oh, okay, it's just visibility... Ah, alright. Dang it, give me... Give me all, uh, okay, fine. Uh, I'll limit it just a little bit, but 51 miles, um, fine. Okay, so it's that visibility thing that bit us. All right, well now it's clear as crystal. So there's the city and where is, uh, I'm looking for Charles de Gaulle Airport. Oh, there it is. Here's Charles de Gaulle International. And I don't think I can see Orly. Oh, Orly is right there. You know what I need? I need a co-pilot who can pronounce the names of all these towns properly. That would be super helpful. Because probably for most of the towns that we're going to be passing over, I'm going to have a heck of a time trying to say the name of them. Is it Reims or is it Reims, for instance? We're, we're uh, going to be going over that on our way to Luxembourg. Uh, there's a town here. I don't know which one. Is that? Maybe that's Reims, actually. Yeah, it is. So this is Reims or Reims. I think it's Reims. R-E-I-M-S. Good times. That's Luxembourg right there. Yep, Luxembourg. Uh, so a little bit further north here. I think it's it's sort of like that area right there. So yes, Luxembourg. Not entirely clear where it starts and ends. It's not like the landscape really obeys borders like that all the time. I think the west side of it, no, no the east side of it is bounded by a river. It looks like the west side should be bounded by some terrain feature, too. Okay, and that's the airport, and that's the city. And I think that... That's the Moselle River. And that should feed into... The Rhine River. So we can just follow that to the Rhine. And we are now over Germany. Trier is close to an island in the river. 
Oh, there we go. This is Trier. This is Trier. I believe. <laughs> okay, so still alongside the Moselle River. Okay, I believe in front of us we can see the Moselle flowing into the Rhine River. That's the Rhine River right there. And the city at the corner, if you will, at the junction is Koblenz. So that's the city of Koblenz. But I'm not going to fly over it directly. I'm going to turn south here to follow the Rhine. And the city of Frankfurt is not on the Rhine River. It's on the main river, which is an offshoot of the Rhine, and you'll see that. Uh, right here, as we go along the Rhine, you'll see it turns eastward, and then the main river is actually an offshoot to the east there before it turns south. Okay, and so here, that's the main river, and this is the city of Mainz, which is pretty easy to remember. The main river flows into the Rhine at the city of Mainz, or M-A-I-N-Z, however it is pronounced. And this is the city of Weisbaden. So we'll follow the main river for a little bit just to get to Frankfurt, and then we'll turn around and rejoin the Rhine River. Okay, up ahead you can see Frankfurt Airport. Frankfurt Flughaven? Flughaven. Which I assume is like Air Haven or Airplane Haven. Um, yep. I think it's a hub for Lufthansa. I know there's a lot of international flights coming in and out of here. And I think that's, that's pretty good scenery it's got of it. I don't know if it... and boy does it add to the lag. Yeah, we, we're getting serious lag trying to fly over. <laughs> so there must be... it must be high-class scenery. This... Uh, that comes bundled with uh, X-Plane. And this is the city of Frankfurt. Well, this isn't the center of it. Uh, the center of the city... I, oh, sorry about the camera. Um, the, I think this is the center of the city over here. A little bit upriver from the airport. So, hello Frankfurt. Here is the city of Worms. Um, amusingly named Diet of Worms from history. I believe that that happened there. I assume. Sometime or another I'll get together like a history filled flight, but that's not this time. I'll have to get my notes together for that. Okay, and this here is the city of Mannheim. And Ludwig. Ludwig. Oh, forget it. Uh, there, there is another name there, but Mannheim I can deal with. So, yes, Mannheim. I think Mannheim is technically this part here, and Ludwig Schaffen, Ludwig Schaff, Ludwig Schaffen is this part, according to the map at least. So Mannheim, Ludwig Schaffen, but at least Mannheim is sort of a more familiar name for us, I think. There's a little fork there near this city and I'm trying to figure out which city that is. Oh, I think uh, that's Karlsruhe right there. That's Karlsruhe. Gave its name to a cruiser. Familiar from World of Warships. Okay, this is just really pointing up a little bit too high again. The city you see in front of us is, I believe, Strasbourg. So, uh, especially when you see those little forks in the Rhine, that's Strasbourg right there. And Strasbourg, of course, right on the border of France and Germany. So, on uh, this side to our right is France, and on this side to the left is Germany. And we are now headed for Basel in Switzerland. 
which is where the Rhine enters Switzerland. And then it takes a turn and it follows the border between Germany and Switzerland. Uh, there's some blocks that aren't rendering right now. But then again, we are going very fast. This is Basel. Okay, that one rendered good. Okay, and so we will depart the Rhine. And we will head towards Bern. So again, uh, whoop. when at Basel the Rhine takes a turn, here to the north is Germany, to the south is Switzerland. And so we are now over Switzerland. Ooh, we seem to have a problem, Switzerland. Uh-oh. I'm losing Switzerland over here. Uh, how's my G GPU? Seems alright. Why am I losing Switzerland? Oh no. Well, see, this is one reason I... Maybe I should just slow down, dang it. Ah, there we go. Wow, just as soon as I slow down, it corrected. Hmm. Okay, so, new rule. Don't go above 1600 knots ground speed over Switzerland. Go figure. Seems like a good rule anyway. Why would you want to go past Mach 2.5 over Switzerland? Okay, I believe this is the city of Bern. Right here. And we can clearly see the Alps. Uh, there is Lake Geneva. And my usual way to go is to follow Lake Geneva and head into the Alps like that. So we'll do that. So on the opposite side of Lake Geneva is Geneva. The city of Geneva is over there, closer to France. In fact, uh, basically right on the border of Switzerland and France. Oh, it's doing that, that blue thing again. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't like drawing meshes. Yeah, maybe it just doesn't like drawing meshes. Hmm. Looking at this, we've got a bit of a photo scenery problem in that they clearly did parts of this in different seasons and in other parts in other seasons. So this isn't the best photo scenery right here. Not what you would be looking for. Obviously beautiful on the grand scale, but we really need to fix this part in particular. Uh, hopefully it's not all like this. Hopefully it's not all patchwork. Well, if you get, uh, get Alaska like this... Alaska is much bigger than Switzerland though, that's the problem. Uh, it takes a lot more disk space to contain something like that. Or like the Rocky Mountains, again, much bigger swath of land than what we're dealing with here. But if we could, that would be superb. Uh, and again, without the lines though. You can sort of see between the mountains, uh, the Rhone River Valley here. That must be a heck of a place to live. That valley. Well, at least uh, there doesn't seem to be any seams here. That's good. But the Rhone River Valley is so beautiful, I really want to make sure to get that without any seams. Now this part seems alright. It's just uh, where Lake Geneva comes in, it seems. Okay, I believe... Is that the Matterhorn? I mean, the thing about Matterhorn is it's a very sharp peak. That's the whole point of it. Glacier, glaciers here. Feeding the rivers that we've seen so far.
Yeah, I believe that's what this is. This is Matterhorn. Vienna is a little bit out of our way right now. We'll have to pass it after Venice. We'll just follow the Alps and continue on to Venice. And then uh, I forgot that Vienna is way further east. I got in the wrong uh, order. So we'll, we'll now try and land at Venice after following the Alps. As long as we go straight east right now, I think we'll... That, there's Milan. Uh, Milan is to the south of where we need to be, so yeah, straight east will take us to Venice. Yeah, aside from the area close to Lake Geneva, this is looking very good. I think you'll agree, this is looking quite spectacular. Well, we're uh, jetting pretty fast across this part of Italy. 1,800, I think. We're pushing Mach 3.21 to 2. Mach 3.25. So this lake is Lago di Garda. And it's once again not rendering. Well, okay, I'm going really fast. I'm going Mach 3. And it doesn't like that. It really doesn't like that. So I'm going to slow down. Try to convince it to render things again. Ah, the troubles of flight simulators. Come on, game. You can render that. Hold on, let me see. Pause? I hate pausing. Hmm. Oddly, pausing does not seem to... Oh, wait, there it goes. All right. But, uh, yeah, very important to render that part because we're flying over some important cities. This is Verona. And so, two gentlemen of Verona, uh, Romeo and Juliet, that sort of thing. That's right here. And we can follow this river down. This is the Adige River. But the Po River is sort of more famous. That's further south. That's that one. That one is the Po River. There's a Dige River. And then north of both of them is Venice. It was very smooth in uh, Germany. Ah, there we go, finally. Sheesh. So there you go. That's the Venetian Lagoon. And right there is the city of Venice. We will actually be landing at an airport over here. Uh, I don't think this is Padua that we're over right. Maybe. This might be Padua. Also familiar from Shakespeare. That's a marvelous sort of swampy place. The Venetian Lagoon. Sort of reminds you of Cape Canaveral kind of thing sort of has that general feel to it. And that's the city of Venice itself right there. It's just a marvelous sort of city concept. And there's the airport that we're going to try and land at. Uh, let me try and recall its name. It's Marco Polo. It's uh, Marco Polo Airport. Okay, time to go into the cockpit. So we'll take a tour of uh, Venice on the way out. We've done quite a bit of touring on this flight already, and I've I've had to deal with so many game crashes to get here that I really want to just get it done. But I don't know. I think we're just too fast. I think we'll uh, do a U-turn and come at the airport from the opposite direction. Good thing I'm not bothering with air traffic control. Well, I guess that leaves us an opportunity to take a look at Venice here. That's quite a thing. 
I, I wonder if it's rendering the 3D buildings at all or not. It's tough to see because, I mean, the photo scenery sort of renders the shadows of the buildings as well. So I don't know if there's any depth there. I don't think so. But it's a, it's a lagoon. It's a swampy sort of thing. You can take a look here. Again, uh, this bar in particular, you, you can sort of imagine a row of rocket uh, launch pads right there. Make total sense. Honestly, that doesn't look like much of a runway. I hope it's alright. I mean, I hope it's like not some sort of pitfall here. Oh man, I'm, I've got a bad feeling about this. Was tough. Don't go into the drink, don't go into the drink, don't go into the drink. Wow, that's the fastest speed I've ever touched down in this plane, I think. Good thing I know how to use the drag chute. Okay, we have arrived at Venice. An unmarked runway somehow. Is this like a taxiway or something? Because this is a little bit unconventional. I think it's also a runway, judging from the map. You can see a long runway and a shorter runway. But sort of unconventional. Oh, I think. Taking a look at what's happening there, I think the photo scenery is like interfering with the regular. I don't know what's going on with this. Okay, I briefly paused it and then finally we got the runway texture. So there's something going on. Uh, let's uh, slow down, break, 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 break. Um, something going on between X Plane 11 and my GPU, I guess. Uh, yeah, it. they don't really like each other right now. Something about texture rendering and all that. I think I I tried to set it to compressed. Hold on, let me show you. Um, maybe if I do it no compression, it'll be better. Maybe that'll be easier to load. I don't know. But we're at the end of this flight, so we'll take care of that next time. Lots to learn about uh, how to set up this game properly. Ah, oh, but too far. Ah, oh. all right. Well, that wasn't quite right. I wanted to stop right there. But okay, we have arrived at Marco Polo Airport in Venice, and we will be moving on to Athens and Cairo, I believe. Either that, or we'll try the Istanbul route. I haven't decided yet, but that'll be for next time. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.